Hallelujah. Hey, everyone. Wow. Oh, beautiful. Well, if only I would have grown up with uh, that kind of uh, music being my influence. Um, but um, it, it did remind me of fun times before um, with empty hammer pants and neon. Um, kind of remember when I was young, the challenger and all the issue of that going up in, in flames. I remember I was seven and that was not uh, not something I could really uh, conceive of very well. My my uncle works at NASA or worked at NASA and uh, I really liked math and, and everything um, when I was growing up. And uh, I got into gymnastics when I was young. I really liked He-Man, so I liked doing the the exercises that were like trying to show off strength or something. I, as you can see, my form was not very good. Um, but I was like, what's the hardest exercise you can do? And they're like, a mana, and I'm like, I'll try to do whatever I can there in the worst shape possible. And um, I, I guess um, if you could go to the next picture, please. Thank you. Um, so, I guess I, I grew up with, uh, that. I, I thought that was fun. I saw a picture of myself in Disney when VR was first being made, like in, well, I don't know, first being made, but that was like in the 90s. But anyways, I, I was always into uh, tech and, um, and kind of going um, beyond uh, what more people would have thought certain limits should be like, uh, uh, trying to put some order to this, um, but but not only in in trying to find the harder exercises, but also in like kind of here we are breaking into a church, kind of like in, not we they had ruins over in Guatemala, so I'm in Guatemala, and um, I'll give some context with this. But these these ruins, uh, we used to go with friends and kind of hop over, and there was like a crypt down there with a lot of spiders and everything, and that was the closest that I got to church when I was young. Um, around uh, the age of 10, my mom, um, she, we never went to church other than for like Easter and Christmas, but um, she was like, I want my son to know, uh, figure out for himself what the truth is. But she was really nice and got a Bible when uh, I was about, I guess, nine or 10 or so and read me about Jesus. My, my exposure before that was going to, um, like uh, my friends here in Guatemala, a lot of people are, you know, they go to the Catholic, Roman Catholic church. They, I, went, I, I remember going there and um, uh, I, I didn't really understand what it was about. A friend even asked me, well, are you, are you evangelical? Are you Catholic? I'm like, I don't know what the difference is. And uh, he's like, well, do you believe in Mary? I'm like, I don't know who Mary is. Do you believe in Jesus? I don't know. He's like, well, you're an atheist then. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm an atheist. And I, I just never really had it explained to me. Um, He-Man was like who I thought was cool, the X-Men, other things. And so when my mom here read me the Bible, I was like, for some reason, I knew Jesus was who he said he was. And I thought, that's cool. There's God. I really like the X-Men. And I said, God, if you're real. No, I didn't say, God, if you're real. I was like, I knew he was real. I was like, God, I'm not going to believe in you unless you give me superpowers. And uh, yeah, I remember something about like God looking down at me before I was saying that. And he was kind of there. He was happy. I was like, oh, how nice to know there's a God. So um, anyways, I was kind of um, not the the... <laughs> I don't know. Could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you, Tiger. Um, so as I was growing up, I uh, I thought that I was kind of um, a smart person, I guess. I mean, um, we uh, had a. I entered a lot of computer competitions and other stuff. Um, this is something that I would consider loss basically now, but maybe it give, the idea behind this is to give some perspective of where I was before. And God bless you all. I mean, I don't deserve to, to be here speaking about this, but um, because this is like, I, I am way better than I, I deserve being able to be back here. You'll see where my life heads. 
this is just kind of to say, like, I thought I had things kind of figured out. Um, but that's my dog, Rocky, by the way. You'll you'll hear a little bit more about her in a little bit. But um, the, uh, I mean, I, I got, like, first place in, in physics in Guatemala for high school. And I, this is not to boast. This is just to say I had, like, these thoughts that I was a good person. Like in math, I got first in computers, I got first in, and then uh, here you'll see in a little bit where um, uh, I, I had a, uh, I'll explain it, um, but basically my, my dad here, he would take me to these breakfasts that he had, he became a Christian when I was about 11, where people would speak about all that Jesus had done in their lives, it didn't matter what church, and I'm like, oh, that's great, but that's, you know, they're bad people and whatever. And, you know, I mean, I don't, I'm not like that. And I didn't really know much about what G what it meant to follow Jesus at that point. And so, you know, at the age of um, 17, 18, um, we did this, um, that, that's my friend. So I'm, I'm the guy right underneath the doggy. <laughs> uh, and that's a, a friend, Tim Morton. I didn't actually meet him before this picture. That was at the beginning of 1998. We started a company after winning first place in North America with like a, a, a demo that was the first that did like um, with computer accelerated rendering. Um, I'll show a little bit about that uh, right now, actually, the demo that, that we got. And um, so, I mean, this was before I was Christian. Um, I didn't know much about Jesus, what to follow, what to do to follow him or anything. thing it looks kind of cool um i don't know maybe we should maybe we should do this too <clears throat> so um i don't know i want to welcome you guys to uh come through um sorry about this through here So here is uh, where I um, made uh, <laughs> made the decision after that. Uh, my mom had passed away from cancer at that point, and uh, she she was always somebody who helped me kind of stay grounded and do uh, all my homework. Um, when she got sick, I actually quit high school, and uh, um, I always really wanted to have. Uh, like a, a girlfriend when I was young and I noticed that girls normally they'd hang out with people who did drugs and I was like oh see my mom uh my dad was always like if somebody offers you drugs you know come to me and I was always like drugs are bad but then when I noticed that women seem to um to like uh oh sorry about this <laughs> seem to like people who were into things that were not I, I didn't understand it. I was like, well, maybe it's not so bad. I had a friend who was uh, all about, he seemed cool, even though he did drugs. And before this, I had actually put somebody, I had called the police on somebody who smoked pot when I was like 16, who offered to sell pot to people. Cause I'm like, you know, just say no. But with this other friend, he was cool. And uh, 
and I noticed that, and so I, I had, um, I started with pot, then I started doing um, drugs. And uh, so this was, I had started this company with a person in England after, um, after, uh, I'm so sorry. Just try, I did a mistake here. And my, there we go. Sorry, a uh, scene went, shut up. So, um, started uh, with that company and I couldn't get into England because the company was over in England. I had just talked to the person over IRC, which is a kind of primitive, uh, an earlier chat. And uh, we were like, we could do that. We started it, but I couldn't get in. I got deported. I went to Benny Dorm because you could choose where you got deported to. I went there for like six, six weeks and trying to get the visa working. And um, the um, after the visa couldn't work, um, then I tried the next place and the next place. Uh, and so I ended up in California. And um, there, after doing pod, I... Uh, um, then I was like, oh, this is cool. I was in Berkeley. I uh, started in raves. I started with um, some of the other rave uh, substances. And uh, I was like, well, you know, this uh, computer gaming thing that I wanted to do since the age of five, uh, the Commodore 64 was important to me. Uh, it's not working out. So I became a DJ and I was over in California. And uh, you can see over there, um, <laughs> you know, the, this is probably one of the less had pictures but you know we were all seemed very happy um on things there there we had started uh with a person this thing called dance safe to try to help people not have adulterated substances and then in um in guatemala um uh, could you go to the next picture please thank you so in Guatemala, I became the first, these, these are not exactly from that time, but um, they're from the similar idea. I, I became the DJ of the first like nightclub down there for electronic music. And um, I had my first, like, I guess you could say a real girlfriend. My idea though, I didn't really treat her as you should a friend. And um, she, she at a certain point went to the Dominican Republic. And so I, I decided I would make a, a website for, and here I am, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, this great guy doing all these kinds of things. Um, it's a problem. It's really bad it, that that we, we because I was already at this point doing drugs. I was doing a lot of other stuff. Um, and uh, so anyways, my girlfriend, she went to the Dominican Republic. I made a website and uh, to, to get a ticket over there. And then I saw I'm good at this. So I started another company. And I was like a CIO of that company, like, uh, um, and then got involved in like bigger and bigger things. And because I had trouble concentrating, uh, like, every, I thought it was normal, but then I was like, this is, somebody told me about like, maybe I have ADHD. And so I started on Ritalin. I started getting more and more distracted. Um, and we made these like really big projects they were, they eventually ended up bigger than like I could actually logically do. And I, I started thinking that maybe I can invent a brain or something. And I don't know if you guys had, uh, have seen the movie, like a beautiful mind and he's actually smart. I'm pretty dumb. I'm just a good uh, actor, but uh, like, uh, the, um, but I mean, uh, trying to make all these connections little by little, I mean, I was becoming more disorganized. And my girlfriend said, you should be, you should go to this um, place called Reed College. Um, could I try next slide, please? So I was like, okay, I'll try that out. So I got my GED. I went to Reed College. Look, there I am. There's like an MC Hammer. Um, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I like Hammer. Um, the nice thing, Hammer did have that one song about praying. But, you know, there I am, uh, the first day of school, I was a bit older because I dropped out, went in later. And so, I mean, anyways, uh, I, was, uh, I was next to these other two people and presenting ourselves. And I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, my, my name at first was uh, uh, <laughs> Brian. I'm like, oh, I'm Brian. And then the next person next to me, I didn't know him. He's like, I'm Brian. And the person next to me was like, I'm Brian. 
and then we were known as like the three Brian's on the same floor. And uh, I don't know, it's like the, what, the good, the bad, the ugly or something. <laughs> it's probably the bad and the ugly. Um, but the, um, so during this time, I got together with a Christian group. They're the ones in the lower right corner. And they were, um, they, they were really influential to, to my life there. Um, I got first place in like on my floor with another lady in the immorality quiz that a lot of, um, the, you know, student bodies normally have the read college student motto was um, atheism, communism, free love. I mean, nothing really godly about it, but thankfully there was this Christian group on campus. And um, I really care about the people there. Reed College is, it's small, it's in Portland, Oregon. Um, they're kind of, I guess, uh, people who aren't very, like, I, if I would describe it, kind of, uh, kind of quirky probably pretty specialized in certain areas, not very well-rounded, maybe you could call us nerdy or something like that, but um, probably pretty haughty too, and if, if I look at myself, and you know, pride comes before destruction. And so I had uh, a girlfriend-ish thing here, and she had an abortion without telling me. Um, next slide, please. And um, so, um, uh, this is the the photo on the uh, left. Sorry, and I guess uh, the videos are just kind of like if you get bored or something, <laughs> if you just want to listen and see something else. But the photo on the left, I mean, hopefully they're meaningful videos too. But the photo on the left is uh, this one like music event, and um, this has to do with a bit later too. I had um. I was dancing and I always dance kind of quirky, but for some reason that night I had taken some substances and I'm like, oh, you know, I felt like more enhanced. And people even after were like, oh, you were dancing pretty well there. And the strange thing during the dancing was um, like, as I was moving my hands, I, I noticed like, the, obviously it was from the substances, but um, like you know blood coming out of my veins and like giving life to the world and like a crown of thorns and I'm like this is kind of strange and I couldn't you know understand how blasphemous that was um but anyways on the Reed College I mean I uh kept doing drugs and everything until at this one point I had a, a really really bad like really bad um, it was shortly after this, so this is one activity called Ren Fair to just give you an idea of like it gets pretty chaotic. They'll build these structures and everybody will dress up as knights like right after graduation. <laughs> and I was on top of that structure like seconds as you see that guy there jumping down like that it, it like people knocked it down <laughs> with all the wood, totally, you know, um, on substances and stuff. And uh, thankfully, um, so anyways, here I was still thinking I'm a good person. And there's a, a book called Blue Like Jazz that was written while I was there that's pretty famous. Um, at least it was, I mean, this was way back in like 2002. And the per remember telling my other friends who weren't Christian, like, oh, I'm, I feel terrible. Take me to my Christian friend. I mean, I was being like red, white, and blue, like breaking apart into, uh, like the white breaking apart. Am I muted? Can, can, can you give me hearts if you can hear me, please? Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, so, um, even after the, the like abortion, the other things, I still thought I was a good person and uh, this, this drug thing. And um, I, so they took me to a friend who was Christian during this bad trip with the white splitting into red, green, and blue and all kinds of other stuff. And, and he and friend stayed up till six in the morning, like babysitting me. He, he wasn't, I mean, the only people who I saw happier at the end after they graduated were the Christians in this college which was a group of about like what 
17 maybe and um and so I, I on the wall i noticed this thing he had that was in greek where it's like from from john one and the the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not understood it it in the greek it means kind of like comprehend to overtake and i'm like oh so to comprehend so it's like god is irrational so i tried to break out of my rationality and anyways after this i i i thought my friend is cool so um i he stood up uh, he was up with me i noticed the, the stars i thought i saw this weird symbol that i thought meant something like innate to the universe and and i thought to follow god you had to love everybody and that's what it meant to be a christian and that's a great thing and i'm going to explain something right now that i'm going to you'll understand hopefully better after but when i looked up at um at this guy i told god okay i love everybody i was trying to overcome this bad trip and all of a sudden i saw what i thought i it was like a white dot but i understood it like a white i understood it meant god that was up there far away but instead of like the first time where he seemed happy it was like he was really angry with me there was some love there but it was anger and i'm like why are you angry with me i wondered and all of a sudden i felt very very scared i started shaking i i couldn't stop shaking for two days i remember going to my non-christian friends i'm like are there any churches that you think are cool and they're like well most christians are pretty um judgmental but i think the quakers are kind of cool and i had this uh there's going to be a slide later about it but not right now uh that is that was about peter walking on water and uh and Jesus was like, why did you doubt? And I had that verse really in me at that moment for some reason. I went to the Quaker church where I don't know if you know it, but people just sit down and and wait for God to say something. And during the one hour session, only one verse was said, maybe two, one after that, but uh, it was the same verse that I had in me. And I thought that's cool. And nobody actually gave me follow up. I didn't really go with the Quakers, but um, it was just an example of like God reaching out to me at that point even though I thought he was angry with me. And um, so anyways, uh, things kept getting crazier. I felt like my mind was unwinding after that. I felt like I couldn't uh, get out of, um, what do you call it? I couldn't get out of that situation that I was in. And um, I started, I went to psychologists. I went doing everything I could to, to get better. I eventually I, I had a relationship with another girlfriend who, who told me why don't you go to like a christian retreat even though we weren't being very christian i'm really thankful for that that the, my christian friends invited me to but i wasn't really following jesus i didn't even know like what it meant i thought it was like love everybody so it's like hey just buy everybody you know whiskey and do whatever makes them laugh and happy and not make them upset with you and that was my idea of love now um this girlfriend, she left at the same point right before my junior year as I was having problems with uh, another person. She didn't really do anything wrong, but I had these weird things where I would go up to people and, and tell them, like, you know, here are my haughtiness. Oh, you know, all these other people. It was a joke to me, but I would say these people, you know, we've got it figured out, I'd say to my friends and everything. And, and, and like a, at this one point, somebody else did something similar to me. It was that maybe it was after the retreat and i thought that is incredibly evil and for some reason with all the other things i couldn't sleep my mind started having all these problems and uh, i couldn't sleep for like four weeks and then he was like why don't you shake my hand he yelled at me uh i was i had a big mental breakdown my dad here eventually had to come up uh take me to the a hospital uh, down in guatemala in 2003 um, I got better from that, uh, not, like out of the hospital in like a week, I didn't get better. I was having weird things at this point. Like I thought I was having these weird sensations and, and somebody would say, Saddam Hussein just died. I'm like, it must be because I, I sense the connection to all the Muslims who are out there angry about Saddam Hussein and uh, all these other weird things. And so I kept, um, so anyways, I got, with a lot of medication and stuff, kind of wellish. And uh, could you go to the next slide or I don't know if there is another. 
not, you can erase it, I guess. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, anyways, through here... <laughs> one second. So, I went back, actually, to read after that. Now, you, you'll want to not fly here at this point. It's better if, if you have flight taken off. Um, but, anyways, down here, I, I went back, and I was still doing the same. I, I, right before I went back, I, I, I told myself, I'm going to follow Jesus. Uh, I've explained it before, 2004, uh, January 9th. I told my dad, I'm going to go to uh, to one of your meetings. And uh, because he had told me all these stories about how he had, uh, you know, um, I mean, my mom, she had it almost appendicitis. She was going to be operated on and he, he prayed and she was better. I mean, he had a heart problem. And, and uh, there's a lot of other things with my mom where um, she accepted Jesus two days before dying. Um, but she was starting to go to church and she had only been given a few months and she lived for like a year and a half But then started following all this which all the, some stuff that wasn't Christian, but she accepted God right before My dad here he spoke in tongues once in Arabic without like knowing the language and uh, Anyways, I'm like I'm gonna accept Jesus So I went to this one thing and and people were speaking in tongues. I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird I was calling up my friend to uh, pick me up and my phone ran out of batteries right then. So I accepted Jesus and uh, I felt like, I guess the Holy Spirit entering me, I started to, um, basically my mouth was moving to speak. And um, and so all of a sudden, like I couldn't reach out into as crazy locations as I could. And I felt like God had me, but I was still living in like getting drunk and doing all these other things. And so for the next, uh, 2004 I went and 2005 I went back to school I couldn't do well so uh, I had to leave again early junior year and learn uh, hula hooping and <laughs> and juggling in the meantime and then things just got weirder and weirder and at the end of 2005 I won't even mention all the things there but like I thought radiators were breathing I thought that um, that God was having me do these weird things of like uh, uh, really weird things, jumping into to like bathrooms to like deposit like money that was uh, in there. Like they had like a donation box um, uh, that I was going to turn Martinelli's into blood. That um, that I was going to teletransport to to uh, Washington D.C. all of a sudden. And at a certain point, at the end of that. Um, like some something told me that Jesus was just a myth. Now the Bible says any spirit that doesn't claim that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of Satan. But um, that Jesus was just a myth so that I could know that I was God. I'm like, that's really weird. I won't go into all the other things right now, but I'm like, this is off. I'm, you know, and I remember something pushed me against the wall. It's like, this won't work unless you really believe it. I'm like, what? And at a certain point, I was writing a friend who was uh, like a, a friend who was a girl, but you know, not a girlfriend. And it was having me write like this romantic letter that I didn't really feel that way. I'm like, I don't really feel this way. It's like, no, no, you'll, she'll love it. But I'm like, well, and, and all of a sudden, this dark force threw me to the floor really hard. And I, I recognize at this point that like there, that, that I was really not in, in a good position. So you guys can follow me if you want. And so I was here and I, I started yelling, uh, like, what's going on? And then this, this uh, dark force told me, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell. And I'm like, why? What's going on? I felt like this white light telling me Satan is going to try to make you think that and say that you are Jesus Christ. And if you do that, the way this isn't like sound doctrine, I think there's even forgiveness for this, but that's what I felt at that point. You're going to go to hell. And if you say that, that 
that you are Jesus Christ. I'm like, well, I'm not. And so I started yelling at the top of my lungs. I am, I, 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 I'm not going to yell, but I'm I, for a long time that, you know, I am not Jesus Christ. Like as hard as I could, as hard as I could. And Jesus Christ is Lord that my roommates bless their hearts, but they called the police on me. <laughs> and so like, I, 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 like four of them actually had to come and tase me. And, um, and uh, they put me in this hospital. At first I was in this one in, called Providence, really nice hospital. Um, but I remember feeling like when I woke up from this daze that um, uh, they, they, uh, I had these needles and I remember jamming them out of me because I, I had to run away from the hospital. And I <clears throat> got into like a uh, naked, I ran across the street from the hospital, people chasing me and to, into a dumpster truck. And then they're like, this is gonna help so that Satan finds you useless. So he can't use you, so you'll be safe. I'm not saying this is God. I was just like totally disoriented. And I got in there, I uh, went through a, a time of really deep despair, ye like yelling the whole time. I was in this hospital. Um, then they put me in another one, which is the same one as one flew over the cuckoo's nest over here. Now, accidentally, I'm, I made a, a little mistake, but there's a couple more pictures here that aren't super important, but I made a mistake and uh, uh, you'll see him um, explain about them. But um, it was like, it was in such deep despair. and. There was this group of people uh, who visited me and told me, you need to get baptized. And at this point, I was like, I'm ready. My dad here came. He came to, to visit me. He pulled me out of this hospital. Um, I'm trying to make things shorter for, for time's sake. But um, so he pulled me out of the hospital and I got to uh, Guatemala and um, and so I started my long journey upward where I got baptized. Uh, I'm sorry that underwater, <laughs> I got baptized here. And I went to every single church that I could. So um, here's uh, the first, I went, to, I, I went to one where I got baptized. I'm still going to their union church. I also went to another one. And um, how to explain this. I met this one person who prophesied, oh, God's gonna use you to go to a lot of different places. and and everything, I put my illness at that point that was incurable. I had a diagnosis of uh, bipolar disorder with um, kind of like a thing where you hallucinate in that some too called schizoaffective, not exactly schizophrenia, but related, you know, you have effects like they're hallucinative. And I went to every church that I could um, after this. And I remember people were like, what do you want to do now? And I'm like, I'm going to be an evangelist. I didn't know where that came. I went to this one church where um, somebody put their hand on their head and they're like, that degenerative illness you have uh, is um, God wants to see your faith. He's going to heal you. I said, I, Lord, help my unbelief. And all of a sudden I felt the next prayer right after that, uh, that I felt the electricity things growing. And the person said that degenerative illness you have is uh, your feeling is, is being cast out. You're feeling life where there is not life before. Your, your testimony is going to be used for a lot of people to also come to faith and be healed. And I had a lot of other interesting things at this one cell group with this person that I met at another church. And her cell group was at this other church. Um, but the thing is that after that, I, I was like, all of a sudden, I, I could think a lot better. But they also said, get tested after seven months. I'm like, no, if I'm healed, I'm healed right now. And so I went right off the medicine and I was taking a lot of Zyprexa before and then I went on, I got a little bit worse after that. And, and they told me, and uh, somebody gave me a, a message that God wants you to learn obedience and then he's gonna take the rest of the medicine off. But I had to go back on a little bit of medicine. Um, but anyways, I kept going to this church and learning that I wanted to become a cell group leader. So from in 2007, here is like me, I was, I'm, I have this problem with vanity and everything, but there I am in that white suit and I sold it after that. Um, um, but but it, it's like um, these other cool people, they were so cool to put up with my terrible message, whatever it was. Uh, and um, I don't know, it was a great group of friends. I saw this one point with this group of friends 
you know, this one lady was praying for me, uh, praying for us all, the, the group leader, it was the most amazing thing I saw. She was saying about like how God's going to use you and it's going to be like a, like a storm and all of a sudden like lightning outside and you know something about like blessings like rain and all of a sudden it started raining outside and and then she stopped praying and all of a sudden the storm outside stopped and i mean there's these amazing things some of the things i'm going to talk about are kind of hard to put together but it was at anyways um i shortly after this one of the people and i had a small cell group and um and I remember uh, hearing this song about on the radio about like the ask the Lord, ask of me and I will give you the nations. I'm like, Lord, give me China. And shortly after that, uh, a person came to me and said, the Lord's going to have you travel. It's going to be almost supernaturally within a year. And um, so I went in that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, all of a sudden, somebody contacted me from China about how they liked some of my work and everything. And I was doing terrible work. At, like, like at this point, I was in bed most of the time. I, there's so many things that it's hard to pack everything in here. But I got to like within a year, uh, they, they told me and they flew me to China and um, had just amazing experiences there and including like this one really weird thing. But basically, uh, when I was there, I was trying to evangelize to people and I had this terrible way like I go up to to people who were um, like drunk and uh, and I'd be like just believe in Jesus everything's gonna be okay and at a certain point I felt like God put on me in and tell them the rest like well what's what is what, what else is there don't get me wrong believing in Jesus is like the root of it but Paul said don't uh, make Make sure, like he he would preach the whole counsel of God, and that's why he wasn't guilty of people's blood. And I, I I'll get into this later. Basically, I got a little bit. Um, I I had kind of been off medication a little bit before that for a little bit, but I had to go back on it. And uh, a little bit later, God had me read the Book of Jude in 2012. Um, it really saddens me, but I I was going to this one church, and I pray please pray for this man. But he had me read the book of Jude nine times and then listen to like this sermon. This pastor had us all say that like we were we were God like Jesus Christ was. I'm like, I'm not Jesus Christ. So that was the last time I went there. But I was just like, you know, God's just going to make everything work out. And in this one sermon, you know, he had basically he said that Simon the magician, I don't know, that's a story in the book of Acts, was right in trying to pay for the anointing with money. And Peter just wanted to kill him when he said your money perish with you. And that was the moment I recognized, oh my goodness, you know, there, the book of Jude deals with like false teachings and false teachers. It probably should be a, a notice that his name is like Cash. Anyways, in the, in, it's Carlos, but he still goes by Cash. And, and so that's when I started recognizing like I need discernment to pray only the Bible. At a certain point, two things happened. One, well, I'll say this. At one point, I'm like, I want to help people more. So and I, I um, as for a job, I got this job in Silicon Valley doing uh, a, a thing for Covet Fashion. Great company, beautiful people. Somebody I knew there was doing great work. It was great. It was beautiful, except how could I work on a project that was like breaking one of the Ten Commandments in its name, you know, and people would kind of talk to me about that. And it was just like, Kind of wasting people's time and money and i mean i was like just I, I had to leave there at the same time over here i had heard this story now i'm just saying how it impacted me of this person um penizo vincent penizo um now i i'm not i don't know exactly his doctrine right now or anything but he has an incredible testimony of um uh, he would help the homeless to the point where they threw him out of all his apartments to the point where he um, would uh, basically he had to live on the street and he, he works all day to just give his money to the homeless. I'm like, I want to spend some time with the homeless. So I kept praying to be with the homeless and everybody in Silicon Valley was like, most people pray to get out of there and everything. And and it inspired me. I had to, I went, I got another job. Something very important happened here that I had a, a, a prophecy about that uh, when I stopped drinking caffeine, I was drinking like 12 cups a day. And when I met my future wife, I would have the rest of my medication taken off. I started going off caffeine and I met a person that I did get engaged to. That's a longer story. But um, 
we got we got engaged and a week later somebody came up and gave me a prophecy who didn't know me about how god run me off my medication right then and i said well lord i want the okay from my doctor a dad here my dad my dad here uh my doctor my dad here and a pastor and they all said try it normally i couldn't be off it really for a few days and um uh, and thankfully, I had lots of other people who prayed and, and you the same thing, but I, you know, I was like trying to seek God like full force. So um, basically, uh, me and this other lady, uh, we got engaged. Um, she got sick with the same diagnosis I had, but I've become off my medication. And I've been off my medication and off coffee and caffeine since 2014. So, um, so anyways... Praise the Lord. I was free from medication, and I went to visit her and everything, and uh, I had prayed to be in homeless shelters. And so I, I actually, not a good thing when you're trying to get engaged, but I ended up in a homeless shelter after that, trying to minister to the homeless, learning about how the homeless shelters work and stuff. And, um, and uh, you know, I broke up with, uh, w w she She basically broke up with me at a certain point. We got back together, but I learned music when she was in the hospital because she had eventually been diagnosed with what I had. But that's why God put us together. And at a certain point, um, I ended up in Viroqua, Wisconsin. That's where we f were from. And I saw this movie, which really helped cleanse my doctrine right around the same time, a little bit after I got off the medication, um, which was basically that if you love people, you tell them the truth. And the Bible says that, that that those who lie to people hate them. And so, um, what do you call it? So, uh, this is just talking, it can be for any kind of sin, but it's basically saying that in, in 1 Corinthians 6, it says, don't be deceived. Like if you unrepentfully, if you unrepentfully practicing thinking it's okay, including like fornication and greed and drunkenness and uh, homosexuality and um, uh, adultery and other things, if you do that without repenting, basically, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, I mean, God will work with you if you, but you have to, I mean, I mean um, people basically say it's common sense. First thing you have to do is recognize it's a problem, and then you work with God and confess and might fall but at least we're practicing not falling whatever you're practicing that's what you get better at so anyways um i went there eventually ended up in uh, well later i ended up in uh, i felt like god was like i want you to go to the east coast and uh i had some friends there and i uh somebody gave me a plane ticket because i helped them sell a car and they said they'd give me a ticket then but i had no other money so i started in a homeless shelter there i had some other friends who who were there and uh that I got a job there really soon at, at a Goodwill. That was a lot of fun. I, um, I also met these other people. We did this thing about uh, helping people know about some situation that was bad and uh, in Cameroon. And, um, and uh, um, yeah, please pray for Cameroon. But anyways, I was over in Goodwill and I, I did this thing where I would high five people, like all the customers, and go like, hallelujah and jump in the air and everybody seemed to love it and the only person who didn't love it was this one person i mean the muslims would be some of them would be like please don't do it maybe three but we had like hundreds of customers and then a person complained and somebody was like well stop doing that i'm like well you know um and you shouldn't be so overt about jesus and i'm like well you know i'm just telling people the truth it's like i'm just ta trying to talk about like reason with them and Eventually, they were like, well, you know, I mean, we have uh, freedom of religion. And, and then the same person complained later. And eventually, they were like, you know, the only person complaining is this one person who actually he claims to be a Christian because they would call him Father something, Father Frank or something. And he was the only one. And he'd always be like, don't put Christmas because it has to be for every religion. And it was really strange. Anyways, I'd high five all the, there, this is this one little girl who would, uh, like I said, if you could pick up gum off the floor, like with a little scrape it off, I'd give you a quarter for each piece. And she made like, she like, I gave her a lot of money from like, it was just cool to see the kids like so involved, but I kept high fiving her names. If you uh, think about her, uh, praying about her uh, and her, her family, her mom's Harmony and uh, she's Evangeline and, um, and anyways, um, 
I kept high fiving one, and there, and I felt like the Lord's like, I'm gonna make you work with children, if you um go, if you keep, if you do one more. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So I high fived another, and then all of a sudden they raised my rent. So I'm like, oh, well, I'd rather use the money I'm gonna get from my tax return to go on a mission trip. So I went on a mission trip to Haiti, and that's a whole other story. But, um, basically, on on Haiti, on the way back, I was back in in Virginia, and. Uh, I felt like I had something else to do, and so I went to the same person who told me I could get baptized over in Portland, Oregon. Um, so let's let's go through here. So I'll try to make it through this. Sorry for a little bit over on time, but basically here, um, over on the lower. Wow, we're up close. On the lower left, that's the same family of the people who told me before, and I went with them. They saw me at my worst, and now they saw me like basically back together. Um, and they they let me stay with them for a month, and uh, they paid for me to go on like to go preach over in um, in uh, in Vancouver for a while. I went to Reed College. I tried to preach my testimony in the amphitheater there until the CSOs told me to leave. Uh, I went to the hospital I was at, um, and, uh, and and gave my testimony there. Uh, when when they told me to leave Reed College, what I did was just like preach around the neighborhood seven times. And God, God, I you know bless them unto unto coming to Him. Um, and um, so uh, I, at this point, um, could you put the next picture, please? Thank you. Um, well, anyways, oh, well, thank you. So anyways, after preaching there, I, uh, I also had a chance to preach at like, uh, I'll sh uh, well, I'll see a video after of like a lot of different places. God's blessed me with the chance to do. I had a chance to go to, uh, Dr. Dino, which is with Kent Hovind. And, uh, he had this like science museum and like dinosaurs everywhere and just kind of explaining how there's, you know, how you can see like the Bible explains science, like, you know, there's seashells on top of Mount Everest, there's whale skeletons in, in the Sahara, there's, um, you know, the Big Bang, there's, you know, it explains in Job that God stretches out the heavens and why is dark matter, you know, nobody's found it yet, but God can do stuff like that. Um, a whole bunch of other things, like there's no fossil, like, uh, link that that really goes from like a land animal that's like kind of like a horse-like creature to a whale-like creature and all monkey fossils are basically the same as uh they're either all all fossils either have like all monkey features or all uh human features and but anyways um basically um i had a lot of fun there but um i'm not cessationist and they were and um some people had some problems with that. So I went to, at a certain point, I felt like I was supposed to go to Florida. I'm like, oh, do I know in Florida? And there was this lady there, uh, Gabby, and I'm like, Gabby, do you know anybody there? And she's like, oh, I work at this farm. They're actually looking for people. It's called woofing, if any of you don't know it. You work a little bit, have part time, they give you food and lodging. So I started out there in Florida, in Fort Myers, actually. They were struck really hard by the, the hurricane. and. Uh, preaching around there, making a lot of friends. Um, next slide, please. And, oh, is it just two? Oh, oh okay. And uh, apart from that, um, at the end of that year, uh, during Christmas, I had a chance to make like five songs and they contacted me uh, in from this radio show in Portugal and, and like they had me playing there. So now I was finally a DJ instead of for the world, like making songs for, for Jesus. And shortly after that, they had, um, what do you call it, uh, COVID. So I used to do these things like the demo scene that originally I made uh, that you saw at the beginning, but now I had a chance to participate in this contest in Germany, where this time I got first place in being last. <laughs> uh, well, people there are really, really talented. That's a p big part of it. I, th I think some of it might have had to do with being about Jesus, but anyways, um, I had a chance, uh, like people from, um, 
from a bunch of different places, like thousands of people got a chance to see like the, the gospel shared uh, through this online. And, and that was really nice. Um, just been putting out more music. Um, so yeah, um, praise the Lord. Uh, obviously now I, I, I'm really thankful to God because now I feel like my life is back in order. Um, I'm working at a company. I have like my debts paid off. I have, you know, a huge student and debts and things, uh, well basically paid off. <laughs> um, I, I'm part owner in the project that they have. Uh, I've been working here for like two years. I mean, as all, all med, I mean, my, my psychiatrist is still, he's like cool with me being off meds. As far as I know, all measures of like what normal means is like, I'm okay that way. I mean, my, my doctor back in 2003 was like, I had a, a nine out of 10 worst thing that he ever had seen, but, but God, God can help you through this. So um, then here at the, at the end, um, we're going to see the, um, the, the, uh, just, uh, um, like a music video. It's a song that I worked on. Um, it says save some through, um, right. <laughs> save some through, uh, mercy, some through fear and other things with, uh, like as a backdrop video, a lot of, um, things that I had, uh, have worked on in the past few years and, uh, places I've had the, a blessing to, to preach and, um, the f there's a problem with collision here, so you might have to walk to the end if you want to get to the bottom, like of the cube here. But um, you're welcome to, to do that. And um, hallelujah. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And 
the six angels poured out his fire upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came and Reverence before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, and every stone above the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. The plague thereof was exceeding great.